and I am going to turn it over to you. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight for the third installment of our Alpha Kappa Alpha Pearls by the Bay official interest groups, Making Money Moves. Um, every Tuesday this month, we have been highlighting entrepreneurs and black business owners um, to talk about their lessons learned, um, things that they've been experiencing during COVID, and just really engaging with them to see kind of what their secrets are. And they've been sharing awesome pearls of wisdom. So tonight is another night. And I want to, uh, first of all, thank our distinguished panel uh, that has come on tonight to share their pearls of wisdom with us. I want to definitely take a minute to thank uh, our PR and technology committees, or Kim. Uh, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to make this look seamless. Um, because it's, it's a lot of different pieces um, to have to do programming virtually. And I um, definitely want to thank our uh, wonderful vice president um, who serves as a program chair and um, Sora Kiki who has put this awesome program together. Every week it gets bigger and bigger. Um, the conversations get better and better. And we've had such awesome feedback. And so we're really excited to have this other night to feature um, more business owners. Um, I'm going to take a minute to you know plug. Uh, we have Sora Jessica. Uh, so Kiki said I could get an adult beverage for the event. So in my Lily Pulitzer glass, our very own Sir Jessica, uh, she makes what's called Just Sangria. So I don't know if Jessica's in tonight. I haven't had to check the room. But I'll make a little plug for our own business owner. Yeah, she she okay, good. Well, Jess, yes. She delivers. So <laughs> we have several entrepreneurs. Oh, there you go. Hey, Sir Jessica. We have several entrepreneurs in the group. So it's really exciting that we can support each other and also spotlight and feature other business owners um, throughout our state and beyond. Um, and that's something I've been saying from the beginning. Um, the awesome opportunity that COVID has actually given us is that we are able to broaden our impact and broaden our reach and bring in such great speakers and presenters from all over um, that are willing to share their time and their talents with us, um, especially during this time, because businesses are still being open. People are still trying to find better ways to um, level up in 2020 and do great things. So with that being said, I want to welcome all the people who have logged on. And uh, again, um, good evening and thank you for joining Close by the Bay. All right, thank you so much, Celia, for that warm welcome. We are going to move right along in our presentation. Let me just go on. Um, so good evening, everyone. I would like to officially welcome you all to our third installment of this event, Making Money Moves. Uh, it is a great opportunity for small business owners to be able to share um, a little bit about what it is that they, that they do, the problems and issues and things that they solve with their specific businesses. And it's a great opportunity for each of you to learn a little bit about who they are, how you can support them, and be able to discover information that may impact, enhance your current business. Or if you are a budding entrepreneur and you are thinking about a, biz, a potential business, this is a great opportunity for you to gain some insight um, about, you know, about business and use this platform to ask questions that you might not otherwise have an opportunity to do so. So it is really my hope that each of you really have a good time while you're here, um, connect with each other virtually. Um, I just want to remind you all that each of our business owners that are featured tonight, their contact information has been outlined on each of their individual uh, photos which it can be found on our social media outlets. We are AKA Pearls by the Bay on Facebook, as well as Instagram, and on Twitter, we're Pearls by the Bay. So if you wanna be able to contact these individuals uh, to support them, because it doesn't cost anything to like, share, or retweet a post, or anything that you like about you know, these women tonight. So just wanted to put that out there. And I just, again, it is my hope that you are able to find some information tonight that you are able to use um, to help you as you continue on your, your journey. So I wanted to say that, so thank you. Um, I'm going to introduce our panelists, our VIPs tonight. We are, again, spreading some black girl magic 
These panelists are phenomenal women as individuals and business owners. So before I introduce them, I am going to give a quick couple of housekeeping rules. This uh, session is being recorded for future use, so be mindful of what you say, because it will be recorded. Um, at this time, we're having a, a, a challenge with Facebook. We're in Facebook jail, and so we don't have our, our uh, Facebook stream right now. But if you have any questions that may come up, please feel free, Zoom participants, to type them in the chat box. We want you to be able to connect and engage with each other, even though we're still doing it virtually. I'm going to take a few minutes to turn it over to my co-host, who's also a good friend of mine and fellow sorority sister. I'm going to put her on the spotlight so that she can introduce herself to you all, and then we are going to jump right back into this uh, presentation. Could can you see? The spotlight is on you. Hi, how, hi can everybody hear me? Excellent. Okay, okay, excellent. This is, my name is Katisi Henderson. I'm the hospitality um, officer for Close by the Bay. And i um, very happy to be here tonight uh, with all of you. Excited to hear about these, you know, your companies and, and different businesses. So it's definitely a pleasure. Um, and I'm willing to, you know, can't wait to learn and hear some more stuff. So I thank you so much. And I'm happy to co-host with um, Tori Kiki. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. So we are going to get this party started. It's just, so first up, I would like to introduce Caprice Burris of Alter Ego Fitness. I met Caprice years ago when I lived in New Jersey and I took a pole fitness class and it was supposed to be uh, beginners, but let me tell you, I was struggling. Um, but the thing I really appreciate, appreciate about Caprice is that she um, was so focused on each and every customer and she created a pleasant and warm experience for each of us. It's been years since I took taken another pole class, but I remember that how she made me feel and so i can't wait for you all to learn a little bit more about caprice burrell and her alter ego pole fitness and wellness studio next up is <laughs> my sorority sister miss debbie stevenson of close fitness and holistic nutrition we worked together uh recently uh, earlier this year when aka pros by the bay hosted um Pink goes red, and she was able to make healthy smoothies for us, and they were very tasty. So I can't wait for you all to hear from uh, Debbie and about her business. Next up, okay. we have GL Douglas, who is the good girl of comedy, uh, and also a close relative of mine, uh, Georgette has been, you know, doing her thing out in the comedy world for a long time. And I think that she brings um, a certain type of talent, you know, it's not a lot of, it's hard to find good, clean comedy. And I think Georgette does a great job, not just because that's my cousin, she does a, a good job. And I'm sure that she'll talk to you about her, 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 her journey as a comedian. Last but not least, we have Liz Tillman of Purpose Filled Consulting LLC. She is also my sorority sister, and I also got to give a shout out because she is an AKA VIP. She is the chairman for the notable North Atlantic Region Communications Committee. And I can't wait for you all to learn a little bit more about Liz and her Purpose Filled Consulting business. All right, I'm going to stop my screen share and I'm going to turn the floor over to these ladies so that they can introduce themselves. First up, we have Caprice. I'm going to put you on the spotlight. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hold well on. Hello, how are you? How, how's everybody doing? <laughs> Great. Um, okay, so thank you so much for having me on this panel. And um, thank you so much for, for the very warm introduction. 
very, I, I, I um, that really made me feel nice. <laughs> but um, at any rate, um, just to give everyone else a little bit more information about myself, um, you already know my name. My name is Caprice Burrell. I'm a native of New Jersey. Um, I mean, it's down here it says college affiliation. I'm an alumni of Keene University, if you're familiar with that um, college. And I'm not a part of any Greek affiliations. I do have my heart towards one. <laughs> um, and um, as far as what I do, as she said, I'm the owner of Alter Ego Pole Fitness and Wellness Studio. We've been open since 2011. And um, the basis of the, the, the business is just to promote self-esteem and wellness along with as, as, as well as fitness among our clients. Um, we cater to women from as young as 18 all the way into their low 60s, mid 60s. There really is no age limit on um, fitness. It's, it's how motivated you are. So um, like I said, if you're willing, if a woman is willing to get out of their comfort zone and try an alternate form of fitness, then we're pretty much the place to be. <laughs> um, we're located in Hoboken, New Jersey. And, um, you know, as we get into the conversation later, you know, I'll definitely give you guys my information and you guys, if you're interested in, or in our area, please stop by and visit us. All right. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> Next up, we have Ms. Zebra. Hello, hello. hello. Good evening. So my name is Deborah Stevenson. I am from Baltimore, Maryland. I attended Bowie State University. I am a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And my business is Kalos Fitness and Holistic Nutrition LLC. And we are a health and wellness company that specialize in uh, holistic nutrition consultations. Uh, we have cold pressed juices, we have smoothies, we have wellness shots. And we also have, now we have herbal teas. Um, we just launched another part of our business called Queen Bee by Kalos. Uh, and we focus on women's health, uh, but we wanna treat women's health um, holistically. So that's using herbs, that's using uh, fruits and vegetables, however, uh, whatever is best for you. Um, and we can have a consultation and go over uh, whatever you might be dealing with, whether it's menopause, fertility, menstrual cramps, anything. Um, so we're excited about launching that. We just launched that about two weeks ago. Uh, but we've been around since 2014. And I'll go a little bit more into um, how we got started and where the name came from um, a little later. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next we have Miss GL Douglas, good girl of comedy. Hello. <laughs> hey, everybody, hello, hello, how are you guys? Listen, first of all, I'm so excited about being here. Um, Shakita, thank you so much for the invite. Um, let me just say, I am, I'm hiding in my bedroom upstairs because I have two kids, a three-year-old and um, an 11-month-old and... Ooh, amen. Right, at 41. <laughs> Oh, goals, goals. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead. So, I need the poll lesson and I need the whole list. I need everybody's services up on here. Um, yeah, I, um, I've been doing comedy since um, 2003. So I've been in the game for a minute. I am a graduate of North Carolina Central University. Equal pride. Shout out. I see you on one of my... Um, Eagle Friends is on here. I'm um, Donald Barrier. Um, so, and he's at, he's at, he's at Alpha. And um, I'm just excited to be here. You know, I feel like my job in life, my call in life is to be the joy bell for, you know, everything that's going on. You know, people still need to laugh, you know, in times like this, you know, everybody's stressed out. Everybody has a lot going on, but there's something about the ability to laugh and to make people laugh that is just um, just needed. And so that's my job, that's my business. I've, God has opened so many doors, I've done a lot of things, and I guess we'll get into that a little bit later, but. Um, Georgia, you also, so y'all here. Georgia, you also an educator. You left that part out. Mm -hmm. Georgia, 
<laughs> educator. Oh, because I ain't know what. You you know, know, I know you want to <laughs> yes, I am. A, I am a second grade teacher. <laughs> I'm a second grade Aww. teacher in Jersey City too. So being that I'm a teacher in order to keep me from having a drinking problem, I get to go on. And um, yeah. Do, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um, yes. you were breaking up a little mm -hmm. bit. Okay. Yes. Okay, but I'm back. Yeah, so I, I wear two hats. I'm an educator by day and a comedian by night, and then a mother all the time, and a wife. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's a lot. So that's why I need all your services. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Georgette. We can't wait to learn more I'm about you. So okay. last but not least, we have Miss Liz Tillman up to talk thank to us. Hey, Sir Kiki, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You're good. Yep, you're good. Okay, so sorry. Just wanted yep. to make sure I'm on the technical issues. So, hi, everybody. I'm Liz Nolly Tillman. And um, like Georgette, I work a day job. I'm the vice president of marketing and communications for a global insurance company. Um, but uh, Towards the end of last year, I started my own coaching and consulting practice. Um, I went to the University of Virginia as an undergrad, which is where I joined and was initiated into the Theta Kappa chapter of Alpha, the Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated 31 years ago. Uh, I have my master's in corporate communications from Seton Hall University. I'm a Jersey girl. I live in South Brunswick now with my husband, three kids, and two Kane Corsos. They're big. They're about 300 pounds between them. They're dogs, they're Italian Mastiffs. So we too have a very full house. That's not often this quiet. Um, let's see, what else did you say? Oh, so my business, so Purpose Bill Coaching. Um, you know, for the last 30 some odd years, I've been an advisor to C-level executives in corporate America. And I've had a seat at, the, seat at that table. And now uh, for about 15 of those years, I've been a uh, vice president, VP level, a senior officer level person. And through the course of that journey, I noticed that I was often the only person who looked like me in the room. And move and things like that. And now I built my business around my mission, which is to share the insights from that experience with others. Um, so that it won't take them 30 years to learn how to move and navigate and, and be successful and build either their business brands or their personal brands. So I work with basically two groups of people. I work with small business owners, um, leveraging my marketing background as a practitioner. Um, and I work with achievement oriented individuals. And for both of those, the mission is the same. I hope I help them to build their brands in a manner that allows them to be themselves and uh, so that they can win in business. And um, I'm really excited and thankful for, to my Sora Kiki, who, I, who also serves on my committee with Alpha Kappa Alpha. And uh, so I'm just so thrilled to, to be working with her in this capacity, which is awesome. And um, I'm just really excited to be here with all these amazing ladies. Excellent, thank you so much. It is so, you know, one thing that I have learned that um, as an entrepreneur myself, I make jewelry and I'm wearing my wares now, and I'm a vendor for Alpha Kappa Alpha uh, Sorority Incorporated. But as business, as women, we know that we have to, um, you know, expand our network. And there's a lot of uh, cross, um, uh, I would say a lot of, we, we cross paths in a lot of different things and we wear a lot of different hats. Um, and so I'm so happy that, and fortunate to have met all of you, uh, all of you ladies. So my first question, as we start this pink table talk discussion, I want us to really, you know, get into uh, some real, some real, you know, behind the scenes um, aspects of being an entrepreneur and being a business owner, because sometimes, you know, people only see the, the pretty side of the business, the glitz and the glam, but they don't often get a chance to see your journey and your progression and, and the blood and sweat and tears that you put into it. So I hope that ladies, I want you to be, you know, open and transparent without letting out too many skeletons in your closet, but be open, okay? So my first question is, what was really the, the key driving force to become a business owner? 
Um, and how did the idea come about? And how did you end up uh, raising the funding to support your business? Um, a lot of it's hard to get funding for, you know, for our businesses, especially as women. So please share that information with us. So I'm going to open up the floor to any one of you who wants to answer. You know, what was the key driving force behind your business? How did the idea come about? And how did you gain that money to get started? Caprice, I see you with your hand up. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll break the ice. I guess I'll break the ice. Um, um, my main focus for wanting to be an entrepreneur, and this was before I even opened my business, was I was looking to take more possession of my time so that I can spend it with my family, um, spend it on other pursuits that I was trying to do. And um, at the time I was working in a corporate you know, setting, I was a paralegal and you know, that took up you know, 40 hours of working mixed with maybe 10 hours of commuting. So 50 hours a week went straight to just work and commuting. And it, it left me with very little time on the weekends to just do anything. So I knew that I didn't want to get swept up into that because there were so, there were so many other things that I wanted to do. So um, that led to the desire. Now, actually, I'm, I'm trying to, con you know, you know, not, take over, you know, but finding what that outlet was going to be was a whole nother journey. But um, I will say the desire was just to have more freedom so that I can live the life that I wanted to live and not really be so confined in such a regimented work schedule the way I was. Mm -hmm. I like that. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to turn it over to mm -hmm. To Deborah, I think that's a good question for all of you, for all of you ladies to answer. Let yes. us know how you got start, why you got started. So about 2013, um, I became a certified Zumba instructor, and um, I just decided to just go for it and take the um, certification. Um, and about 2014, I started to get into um, just kind of changing my diet. Um, I was working out more. I was teaching classes. And I asked myself a question. I'm like, well, you can't have fitness without the nutrition. So, you know, just to be a well-rounded person, you have to have both. You can't work out. I mean, working out is 20% and nutrition is 80%. Um, so in 2014, I started developing meal plans for um, my family and um, eating healthier. I started juicing. And then, um, so Kalos, Kalos is actually the Greek word for calisthenics. And calisthenics is a type of workout. So I was teaching group fitness classes and um, we were using mainly just our body, no weights. Um, and then Kalos is also Greek for beauty. So that's where Kalos comes from. So, um, so we use, we, I taught group fitness classes and then I started to um, juice and create juices and smoothies and um, start selling them. And they became a hit. Um, so that's how we added the holistic nutrition component to Kalos Fitness. So it's Kalos Fitness and Holistic Nutrition. Um, and I'm a certified holistic nutritionist as well. And right now I'm in the process of obtaining my um, herbalist certification uh, because now I'm getting more into um, learning more about herbs and how um, herbs can help treat women um, holistically or men as well. Uh, so I didn't have any money to um, start out. I pretty much used the money that I was working um, and I have two kids. I have a one and a three year old. Uh, so right now I'm in the process of working a full time job and running a business um, and taking care of two kids. So I'm just trying to find that balance right now. But um, I'm super excited because things are really like taking off for my business. I'm blessed. And um, and hopefully the, the goal is to be able to stop working my nine to five and to focus on my business um, full time like that that's that black girl magic one and y'all they are they are wives they are mothers come on we got to give it up for these ladies okay who said we can't be superheroes all right all right georgette you're on next let us know you know how did this business come about and where did how did this business come at, come about and did you need any money to get started with this places to live on your journey and crash <laughs> 
Well, um, I've I mean, in high school and even in, um, I've always been told I had a great personality. I was always voted best personality in middle school and high school. And I was never like a class clown or anything because I took my education very seriously. Um, but I just wanted to, one night I just wanted to try. I, I grew up in Roselle, um, New Jersey, and I went to, um, a, a bar now I don't, I don't even drink like that but something just said like let's just go to this bar and when I went there was this guy standing outside and he was like hey I'm having an open mic tomorrow and I said to him well if um I said I said well if I come to your open mic um will you let me do comedy he was like are you a comedian and I had never stood on stage and told a joke in my life I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> And so he was like, you a comedian and you don't know who I am? I said, no. So he wrote his name and number on a piece of paper and the address. And he said, come to my open mic tomorrow. I'll give you five minutes. He was like, first go home and find out who I am. Well, his name was Bob Sumner, who was the... Oh my gosh, you know Bob Sumner. <laughs> yes. I have a lot of history. I have some history with him. That's after the panel. Tell him I said hi, though. <laughs> nothing bad nothing nothing okay. nothing bad but um yes Bob it could have went, went either way you know so um so I went to the open mic you know and I was he again he created deaf comedy Jam. yes he did this is who I'm standing and lying to telling him that I'm a comedian I don't and I don't even know what made me say that and I went and I I did five minutes, a hamburger. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Comedian Hamburger. He was the host that night. And I went on stage and I did five minutes and people just laughed. And Hamburger came on stage and was like, young lady, who are you? And he was like, how long have you been doing this? He was like, people, you know, I know who I was like, I've never done this before. He was like, yeah, right. You like those girls you meet at the club and you take them home. And they'd be like, I never did this before. And I'm like, no, seriously, I never did this before. <laughs> But that night, Regina King was in the building. And what? So many people were just coming up to me like, I need your car. I need your car. I, need, I was like, yeah. I don't have no car. Like, I literally <laughs> just did this. So me and my friends, we were writing my number down on, like, napkins. And then I booked four shows that night. I was like, wow. and then it just started. Um, for me, I mean, comedy didn't take money to get started. It just takes, it takes time. It takes courage to get up and do it because you never, you meet so many people and you tell them a comedian. They'd be like, people tell me all the time I'm funny and I should do it. And my, my thing is, just do it. You will know instantly if it's for you or not. <laughs> you, get your, you get your answer that night. Um, here I am in the game 17 years later. I've done, I did a reality show for VH1. I've traveled immensely. It's, it's just been a blessing, so. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Last but not least, did I do all? Did everyone on the panel go? Oh, sorry. Liz. <laughs> okay, Liz. Sorry. Okay. All right, Liz. Let us know how. What was the driving force to become a small business owner, and um, how did you raise money for your business for your venture? Muted. Okay. Say it again. We can't hear you. She's muted. Okay, hold on. We gotta so I look, look, I'm muted now. Yes. All right. There okay. we go. All right. There's a little blue button that I forgot to press. Um, but I forgot one very important bit of housekeeping when I introduced myself. I am currently um, the first vice president and program chairman for the phenomenal um, Phi Eta Omega chapter in Scotch Plains, New Jersey of Alpha oh, Kappa Alpha okay. Sorority Incorporated. So they'd be, I, I would be remiss if I didn't shout out my chapter. So anyway, how did I get started? So um, my why was originally um, to get the heck up out of corporate America. Um, I live in Central <laughs> yes. uh, I live in Central New Jersey and I commute to New York City. They pay me more than enough not to quit. Um, it's not my dream job, um, but I was like, yeah, what should I do? Blah, 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 blah. Cause what I learned was, you know, I would skip, you know, I would go from job to job or do consulting projects on the side or whatever, but none of it like really thrilled me. Um, and so 
I started blogging for my own like sort of personal therapy to pass the time on my three to four hour uh, one way commute. And um, just because writing has always been like relaxing to me. And through that blogging journey, um, I don't know, I, I indulged my bucket list item that had been on my bucket list for a really long time. And I wrote a book in 2017. Um, wait, hold, hold on. Selfless promo. I know that's right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> and then, that's and the, the book was actually um, inspired by two blog posts that got picked up by some HR and career journals and stuff like that. And the book is called Great Work, Great Rewards, Seven Secrets for Breaking the Performance Punishment Cycle. And performance punishment is that sort of phenomenon where the only reward for great work is more work. More and, work. And um, a lot of me and my friends are experiencing this. So, you know, I, I saw like the traction that these two blog posts were getting because one was about performance punishment, what it was. And then the other one was about the cure for it. And I was like, oh, I can make this a book like easy. Like, ch -ch -ch -ch. so about 21 days, I, 21 days later, I had a manuscript and I didn't know what to do with it. So I took this uh, self-publishing course and um, met this phenomenal community of authors and my book was published. It's on Amazon and on my website. Um, and um, what I learned from being in this community of authors was like a lot of them who were like selling like killer numbers of copies had businesses and the book was a way to support the growth and development of their business. I didn't have a business. Um, this was just a bucket list item that kind of grew out of some you know, therapy on the back of the bus. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, maybe this could be my. Occasions I can brand people, I can brand businesses. You know, I've been doing that for 30 years. It's, it's easy breezy. I've been coaching people for, you know, for the greater part of that time frame too. And so that, that, that part was easy. What I didn't know was the business of coaching and the business of consulting. And I find that a lot of entrepreneurs in our community have ex are excellent widget makers, but they don't know the business that they're in. They don't know how to find revenue streams. They don't know how to generate income. They don't know how to brand themselves, position themselves. They don't know how to build sustainable systems so that their business is bigger than just them and it's scalable and sustainable so they can pass it down to the next generation and create generational wealth and all these things. So for me, the cost of entry was very low because it's just, you know, it's my consulting and my coaching time and, and things like that. Um, and most of my business is online. I'm about to uh, create a new product, a, an on-demand coaching service. It's sort of like a Netflix for professionals who want to earn their seat at the table. Um, I'm launching that in June. So, you know, I had to pay for some technology, my website and stuff like that, but the cost of entry was very low. So fortunately for me, I could use my day job to fuel my dream job. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, uh, so yeah, my day job uh, is funding my dream right now, but I hope that the, that the dream funds my life in the not so distant future because I'm not trying to work for somebody else for forever, ever. And I'm trying to retire one day soon while I'm still young enough and capable enough to enjoy it. So that's sort of, um, yeah, that's, that's been my journey. Um, so a little, little different from everybody else. You know what? Can I, I just forgot. Oh, I, oh, yeah, I got to say something too, but I'll, I'll wait. Okay. Oh, no, you want to go? You can go now. I'll wait for after. Who wants? Who? Okay. Georgette? Yeah. Okay. And, and then I'll go, to you. I'll go back to you, Caprice. Go ahead, Georgette. I was just going to say, in regards to like what Liz said, I mean, it's kind of the same way in entertainment because it's called show business. And I know so many people who have the show, but they don't have the business. You know what I mean? Like comedians fail to realize, yes, you can be funny as I don't know what on stage, but if you show up late, you're unprofessional, you're hard to work with, your business isn't right, you're double booking yourself, your business will always um, cut you off, you know, at the head for, for your show to grow. 
So I I totally dig that. I need your service too. So I need everybody's <laughs> service. All right. Hold you. Can I say one other thing? Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to say one other thing. For me, the biggest investment that I made was to learn the business of coaching and the business of consulting. Um, so you know, I I found myself I found myself some business coaches who had been where I wanted to be. And now I'm, I'm hoping I'll be in a position to do that for others because you, you know, like, like I said, I knew my widget, I knew what I was doing really well. I just didn't know the business I was in. So I had to learn that side of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I made that investment in myself in my future. So this is excellent. Caprice, did you want to add on to that? Yes. Um, I just wanted to interject. I didn't answer the second part of the question as far as, um, what I did to start my business. And as you know, it's, it's a fitness center. You know, I needed a space. Okay, how am I going to do this? And how much do I need? And all of these different things. Um, it was like, I, I tried to go to a bank and I tried to apply for a loan and uh, was turned down. Um, I didn't ask any of my friends or family because at the time they just were, you know, swamped with their own responsibilities. So I had to get really creative. Um, I would say this to anybody starting out a business, start where you can as far as where you are financially. So. I went to, um, like I said, when it came down to finding a space, instead of trying to get a storefront for my space, I found like a little hole, like a hole in the wall somewhere, you know, and negotiated with like the, the landlord, okay, I'll fix up your space if you can give me a couple months free rent, you know, and I did that whole bartering system. And then when it came down to um, just trying to earn some money to to just really start investing look i use my tax returns you know what i mean i don't know about anybody else but i use my tax returns and and just put it all on there okay you know especially when you got some kids you know you get the earned income credit i mean at the time i didn't have any but all i can say is do what you have to do you know to at least get your start off. And one thing I can say is, once you put it on the line like that, you have to immediately start running once you get out the gate. And so it was like, as soon as I had some paint on the walls and some mirrors and some poles up, I was, I was doing what I could to just get people to come in and start you know, getting our services. So it took a lot of engaging people, getting out on the street, because there was no social media too much at the time, handing out flyers, doing everything I possibly could to get people to come into my space, book a poll party, book a class, get a membership, something. And surprisingly, because at that time when we started, there weren't too many businesses like mine around. It was something new. A lot of people gravitated towards it and we wound up doing well right away. I only kept my day job. I kept it for maybe four months and that was it. I only did four months and then I, you know, I left and that's been it and it's been nine years now. Okay. And um, because of, like I said, because of that, right now I'm in Florida and I'm running my business from Hoboken. So, you know, that's kind of how it operates now. And I just thank God for being able to have that flexibility of being able to do that. So like I said, it's possible. That's all. <laughs> thank you so much, Caprice. And I, I, it sounds, and thank you ladies all for answering that question. And from that question, it, it, I can hear a theme. There's a hustler spirit. You didn't really know what it was that you was getting into. And you had, it sounded like you had to figure it out. And so you've made some investment. And I think that that's, even with myself, I didn't know the business side of, you know, making jewelry. Um, and you have to invest your investing yourself in order to become that expert and so along those lines i have this leads me to my next question you know what would you say are the top skills that you need in order to be successful georgette alluded to it a little bit by um showing up on time you are funny but if you are late you're not that funny okay so if you can talk about the top three 
skills that you need in order to be successful. And can you just throw in there on top of those skills that you need, can you talk about the network in the sisterhood? I know Caprice talked about bartering. You know, you didn't have everything that you needed. How did you barter? So the skills that you need to be successful of as a business owner and talk about the importance of partnership and collaboration. So I'm going to, and please, you know, we got a couple more questions. So we want to make sure that you keep your answers um, concise. I'm going to throw this over to Deborah. Talk about the three skills that you think are needed in order to be successful and just talk about the importance of partnership, collaboration. So uh, the three skills that I would say is um, definitely consistency, um, perseverance, and motivation. Uh, because in order for you to just keep going with your business, you have to be motivated. Uh, I know for me, um, during that time, I had two kids and I just kind of lost motivation after having the children and just kind of lost hope and you know, people were asking me, when are you going to start your fitness classes back up? And I just was like, well, I'll wait till next year. Uh, but it was just something that motivated me. And what that was, was my children. My children be became the number one motivator in my life. Um, and just so, so after that, I just became very persistent and um, got back into just finding, you know, finding that um, drive for me. And it, it was, um, I was able to network with Alpha Kappa Alpha and do a few classes. Um, I taught group fitness classes for the Pink Goes Red uh, with S Epsilon Omega. Um, and then uh, just so just having that network of people, having that following, I still had the same people um, after I had my children, I still had people waiting for me to kind of get back into things like, okay, when are you going to start selling your juices again? Or when are you going to start doing this? And so you know, just having that following of people just kind of still made me keep pushing because um, I knew I had people depending on me. Uh, and so that's really what kept me going. Okay, thank you so much. Georgette, let us know. You talked, you started it. What three skills are most important as a business owner? And talk about, um, I guess I, I talked about partnership, but maybe can we switch it for you? Can you talk about the importance of mentorship? Who did you rely on? You know, I'm here. Who can I, did you reach out to anybody in particular to help you with the, a craft? Did you have a mentor to help you or mentors? Um, actually, it's funny because um, the first night I did comedy, I met Hamburger because he was hosting it and he somewhat became um, my mentor because um, that night he got my number, he reached out to me, he began taking me to different shows, introducing me to different comedians. Um, in, um, in comedy, your name in terms of your um, your integrity has to be intact because you can be so funny, but if you rob people, if you don't pay people what you say you're gonna do, you know, I can't stand at the end of the day, cause my, my business is, it's not um, tangible. It's something that I stand- A I service, do. you provide a service. Right, I can't get it back. Once it's done, once I done stood on the stage for a half an hour and told these jokes, you can't come to me after the show and be like, oh, let me holler at you. You know, ticket sales was down. Uh-uh. Um, no. It's not like trying to pay you. When they come to you with your money like this balled up, you already know it's a problem. <laughs> so, I'll be like, mm, my money is fine. Give me my money. Front. Front. Okay. money before, I, before I go on stage, I need my money. I'm accounting. I'll be like, well, <laughs> okay. Don't play with me. Because I can't get it back. Let me tell you something, and, and I, I'm not going to put people's names out, but one of my biggest heartbreaks in comedy came from somebody that I trusted the most in comedy. Um, I did a, a show, and it was, um, I, I worked really hard. I trusted this person. I didn't have no contract. You know, I was just like, I know at the end of this, you know, it's going to be, and they, they, they didn't pay me anything. Like, didn't pay me anything. Wow. But that's okay, because God is good, and he has a way. And they stopped Put talking. their name in the chat. Private. Right, basically. <laughs> Let us know. We got to look out for each other. It's a sisterhood, okay? I'll tell y'all after the fact. Okay. Every kid okay. But, um, but then one night, let me tell you, it was a couple of months later. Um, One night, I saw 
they, they was going to be, they, their face was on a flyer and I saw that they was going to be at this club in Roselle. So I called one of my girls. I was like, yo, let's go up to this club because I, now I had done moved on. I had done learned my lesson, but somebody once told me when somebody owe you money, they remember more than you that they owe you money. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when I walked up in there, I tapped him on the shoulder. I was like, hey, how you doing? It was like, he saw a ghost. After that, after um, that night, I left. He, he texted me. He was like, hey, meet me um at the parking lot at 7-Eleven. He rolled up. He rolled his window down and went like that, like that, and gave me some money and rolled off. Like, now, this was from months prior, you know, but it taught me a lesson. It taught, that was, that was probably, even though I was hurt, I had to say thank you because it taught me I have to look out for me. I got to be vigilant. I have to make sure mm-hmm. my, my T's across and my I's are dotted. How, how yes. that yes. So, um, I don't know if I answered the question, but yeah. That. Thank you, Georgette. Mm-hmm. We are learning a lot. Um, Liz, <clears throat> what are the top three skills that you say that you believe are necessary in order to be successful and in your new venture as a coach and I'm an executive leadership coach as well talk to us about mentorship do you have any mentors or people that whether you know them a lot whether you know them or not do you have anybody that you look to for inspiration and to help you along your journey yeah so in terms of the three skills I just very quickly jotted down number one know your numbers mm-hmm. Um, because you know, you're a widget already. You're all, ex- you know, every business owner goes into business doing what they know, like, you know, what they think they know. Right. But, um, you got to know your numbers, um, because you know, and your numbers will dictate where you invest your time and your resources. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'll tell you a lot about where your market is going. Um, so know your numbers. Second, whether you sell a product or service like I do and like Georgette does, um, Customer experience matters. Yes. Customer experience matters. We live in a post Amazon, you know, everything is customized and instantaneous and over, you know, community high touch white glove service type of economy now. So, you know, folks may try to support the neighborhood business, you know, trying to recycle those black dollars and, you know, and support the community and all of that. But if your customer services, you might get their money once, but they're going to vote with their feet and the money. Yeah. So uh, customer experience matters. And uh, Georgette's example was, was perfect of, of that, you know, so that, that experience matters no matter what you do um, or what kind of business you own. Customer experience matters. Um, if you sell it, it's especially important if you have a service, right? Because if I sell you a product and that you had a horrible customer experience with me, as soon as I get my product, I'm going to forget all about that. I might, you know, I might think twice, well, <sighs> right. so, you know, like we've all shopped that business, right? Where they make beautiful stuff. The service is terrible, but you know what, like, but we, but we put up with it. Right. So, so, you know, you'll get a little bit more of a pass if, you know, if you have a tangible product that works, but a service brand, either way, customer experience matters. Uh, point three is know your why. Um, you know, and for most entrepreneurs who are very successful, it's not always about money. Like money is sort of an outcome, not the thing driving the input into the business, right? I mean, nobody goes into business not to make money, but the thing that makes you sacrifice, you know, and eat those ramen noodles or, you know, skip your Starbucks so that you can pay that, you know, $5 in your business or get you up at three o'clock in the morning to, you know, do what you got to do or whatever, or, or wakes you up in the middle of the night to get on your computer, to get the idea on a piece of paper before you lose it. You know, that's not money that, you know, that there's a, there's a greater why. And so you, you need to know your why. That's why I named my company Purpose Build Coaching, because everything comes back to purpose. Um, purpose is why people buy from you, but it's also what makes you do what you do, especially when things get tough. Um, as far as mentorship goes, oh yeah, I, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I love the topic of mentorship because I coach about mentorship. I actually coach about three different types of people you need to be successful. You need mentors, you need coaches, and you need sponsors. Um, you know, like mentors will, you know, they'll, they're like, you know, Obi-Wan to your Luke Skywalker, you know, like they've been where you are, you know, they've been where you want to go and they can show you the way and, 
you know, like keep you on the straight and narrow, open some doors for you and stuff like that. But a coach can help you get from point A to point B, right? And guide you through sort of a transformation, you know, that, that you need to work through on your own. So they're not going to show you what it is. Like a, a mentor will pull you up and tell you what you need to know. What coaches are going to do that. A coach is just going to guide you through getting out of your own way so that you can make the progress that you want to go. And sponsors are super key, especially if you're in corporate environments, but I see it in sorority um, and, you know, in other aspects of life. A sponsor is somebody who advocates for you when you're not in the room. So when the muckety mucks in whatever your field of endeavor is, the senior people, the, the super important people, wherever they happen to be, are meeting to talk about, hmm, you know what, we need some jewelry for our next, you know, for a giveaway at our next gala ball at the inauguration ball. You know what? Oh, I have a sorority sister that makes that, that makes jewelry. I might not even know you, Sora Kiki, personally, but somebody told me, or maybe I brought your stuff or somebody shared your information with me. So now I'm a sponsor because I don't know you, but I'm speaking for you and I'm recommending you. I'm, I'm advocating for you at the table at a space and a time where you're not, that you don't have access to, right? And you don't even know it's happening. And then all of a sudden you get a phone call. Hey, the inauguration wants you to do jewelry for, for their guests. Huh? What? Who? Where? How? That, that's the stuff. That's how other folks do it. That's how they move in corporation. But the same ha thing happens in business. You never know who is going to be that sponsor for you and open that next door or you know get get in my case get me my next speaking engagement or you know get me my next consulting contract or you know or whatever it is i don't know who that's going to be it might not and chances are it might not even be anybody that i personally know it might be two three four five degrees of separation but somebody's in that room talking about me that i don't even know that's a sponsor so Yes, I think you need all three. And again, I, I'm sorry, I go <laughs> all into this. I, I work with Mike. I teach this to my clients um, and at workshops and stuff like that. But um, so I have all three in my life. And I think anybody who's successful in business um, has all three. I, you know, some, sometimes, you know, I, like I said, I've, that's what I've invested the most in trying to get my business off the ground is coaching and um and a lot of the folks that have coached me as business coaches to help me sort of, you know, move along in my entrepreneurial journey, now they're mentors for me. And a couple have even wound up serendipitously serving a sponsor. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm sorry. That's a big soapbox for me. You, you, hit, you hit a hot button. <laughs> All right. Thank I'll, you. I'll, 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 I'll share the table again. Thank but, you. Yeah. Business um, owners, um, be sure to make sure you drop your information in the chat box so folks can connect with you. I think that, again, this also brings up a great theme. You talking about, you know, um, the importance of branding. Branding. And branding is what you say about yourself. And it's so important. Marketing is what is said, of, you know, what people can see about you and hear about you when you're not in a room. So those things must align, you know, and I think it's so important. I think that you ladies uh, have done a great job building your brand, um, building your network, um, and, and showing that the service that you currently provide, you are filling a need. I think a lot of times business owners, entrepreneurs start out and they are not providing a service that is needed. As a business owner, it is your responsibility. The world needs you, number one, but it's your responsibility to solve a problem that the world needs. If your product, business, or service does not fill a gap, you may have to go back to the drawing board and that's keeping it real. So you, while you may like certain stuff, you have to make sure that you're putting out products and services that the peak that fill the need. So it's well, so market research. Right? Can I, can yeah. I say, can I say one thing on that? Um, as far as can the you, three things, Caprice, can you incorporate that into your next, into your response? I'm, I'm going to go right into this next question and Ooh. Okay, I'm going to try. Yes. <laughs> so remember to try to keep your, your responses as concise as possible. Oh. We are, it's almost it's almost eight o'clock. So my question for you, and then I have to turn it over to my girl, Katiti. Um, talk about some of the challenges that you've experienced as a business owner. Um, and what did you learn from them? Was your strategy start? Was it wrong? You know, when you started out, um, not having contracts in place. Talk to us about the nitty gritty of the challenges that you experienced and let us know how you pivoted from that. So I'm gonna to go to Caprice 
Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to build on that. I just wanted to leave you guys with one quote that I pretty much stand behind when it comes down to running my business. Um, you probably have already heard it before, but it goes like this. It says, your smile is your logo. Your personality is your business card. How you leave others feeling after an experience with you is your trademark. Oh, I love and, that. I love and, that. Yes, and, to that. Yes. That's a girl. That's a post right there. Say that again. Back that, back that up. <laughs> and that is what I live by. That is what has gotten um, our business to being where it is today. It's all about being professional and making people, every last person that you encounter, feel like they are special. As you already know, Shakithia, we met years ago. Yes. And just yes. from that one encounter, here I am today meeting you ladies on this panel, you know? So I, I go with that. I can definitely share this, this, this quote with you, but standing on that, I mean, if you can do that, trust me, you're way ahead of the game. Um, incorporating the next question, when it just comes down to challenges, um, I would say this, I've had challenges because, you know, sometimes as business owners, and you all know it, as a comedian, as consultant, you know, juicing, just everything, you may have people, because everyone sees, you know, the finished product, or everything, when, when everything looks great, and we may make things look very easy, you know, to someone just coming into where we are. However, it's a little bit more complicated than you think. And I've had lots of um, clients come in and say, oh, I can teach pole. That's not hard, you know, and they will try to, you know, mimic what I'm doing because it may seem like it's easy to just open up a space or just, but you need to, there's other things in place that have to work together to make that happen. So I would say that um, that's one thing that I've encountered a lot of you know, people trying to compete, which I don't, I'm not threatened with competition because when you know what you are and what you stand for, there's enough business for everybody. And, and, you know, it doesn't even matter. I mean, does McDonald's think about Burger King? No. Does Burger King think about Wendy's? No. Everyone stands in their own, doing their own thing. Um, but some of the challenges, just to sum up, is, you know, you have that kind of competition where people are trying to steal from you. I've had that happen to me. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you have a lot of people who try to get you off of your vision of, on what your company is. Oh, I have a suggestion I need to make about this, or I think you need to change this, or I think you need to do that. I would say stick with, like, you know, they say, your why, stick with your why. And, and just stay focused on what your vision is and not sway because in you trying to please everyone, you will be all over the place and your business can suffer from that. So I will say that I've had to, through the years, I've had changeovers <laughs> in instructors at times. I've had changeover in certain clientele. They got mad because they didn't like the way our business ran, they, they, you know, but you know what, you have to stick and stay consistent with what you offer in your service because people who understand that and they will gravitate towards you and they'll align with your vision. Okay. And so, um, the, like I said, the, the only way I can say dealing with those kinds of challenges with my business is just, Okay, A, crying on my husband's shoulder. Okay, that's what, being upset over there. Not, le not letting anybody see you sweat. Don't ever let them see you sweat. But then the next thing is to get up and stay steadfast and focused on what you're doing and not waver and not give up. And if you can do those things, you just have to ride it out. It's only a matter of time. I mean, we're all in this COVID situation too. You know, we have to ride it out somehow, you know, never let them see you sweat, you know? Thank you. Um, Thank you, Capro. Oh, that's all I have to say. Um, I want to turn it over to Katisi. Can you? Um, yes. I'm I think in the chat, I don't see any uh -huh. questions. Uh, they address it. Oh, 
Okay, I was just well, looking at the well, chat. Well, you know what? I have, I have a, I mean, because the time is going, so I must ask this question, and that was Caprice. You have segued into something I'm going to ask. Okay. And first of all, I want to say you guys are all fabulous. So I'm going to ask this question, and I want um, Deborah to see if she can answer the question first. Now, many of the best innovations are born in a crisis. So think about, everyone, I want everybody to kind of think about this and how they, and just in your mind, how has COVID-19 affected your business for the good, for the better? How has it affected um, your awesome businesses? Um, Deborah, you want to go, please? Sure. So let me say that um, COVID-19 has definitely impacted our, my business for the better. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's a, a need for, for help. Um, everyone's trying to keep their immune system. Everyone um, yes. some are going for walks and eating healthy and probably haven't did that in years. Yes. So I feel like that people are, I don't know, scared or nervous because of this pandemic. And so my business has pretty much like boomed. I have maybe about 10 orders a week because everyone oh. should um, just get healthy. So in, 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 um, in light of that, I developed a vitamin C bundle. Mm. Um, Particular just for the um, the pandemic, and that includes uh, four juices and four wellness. I mean, three wellness shots. Oh wow! Four different blends, and so what that is is each ingredient that we use is is good for um, it's loaded with vitamin C. So whenever I make something, I do it for the needs of people. I just don't make things, or I just don't sell juice because I want to make a make a buck. That's not what I'm about. I, I literally went back and got my certification to become a nutritionist because I care about the people and I care about people's health. Yes. And you know, I want to do it in a holistic, a holistic way. And I feel like as African Americans, we don't really know, you know, it goes back like herbs and just fruits and vegetables and sea moss and just everything like that. It goes back to years, like 5,000 years. When yeah. That's all we had. We didn't have prescription medication. Um, and so a lot of people don't know my, my goal is to let people know that they can help treat their ailments with mm -hmm. um, just eating, eating healthy. Uh, and so um, we also offer ailment juices as well. So um, juices that focus on hypertension, um, your blood sugar, and um, help with your vision. Um, okay. So it's just, um, so we really, really just have been excited about, you know, just being able to influence people positively, um, just encouraging people to go out for walks. And on my social media, if you follow me, that's all I talk about is yeah. your health during this pandemic, whether it's um, mental, uh, physical, um, just eating healthy, uh, praying, meditating, anything you need, so. Yeah, awesome. and there, there, there are so many needs. I mean, all of your businesses are so needed. Please know that, everything. And especially in a crisis that we're in, we need to find ourselves, our peace, what makes us happy. And we got to eat healthy and we got to exercise and we got to take care of our business. So I commend you all. Um, Georgette, can you answer, can you, um, Deb in that as well? How is this crisis that we're in, how has it, you know, benefited you or helped or how have you, you know, been getting through this whole process through this COVID right now? Sure. Um, as for me, my business, it, it's, it's so funny because um, I don't even want to think about the amount of money that I have lost. Because I have lost. Um, I've lost a lot of money. But I thank God that I do have another job. I'm a teacher okay. and everything. Mm -hmm. But what it has done, it has given me material because it has forced me to be home mm -hmm. for 40 days and 40 nights with my <laughs> And my 11 month old who will be one on the 28th of this month Aww. it's forced me to gather material on my husband who's a firefighter mm -hmm. and um we did we actually did have um the coronavirus we you know but thank god we uh got past it and everything like that oh, um so it stretched me because now I'm having to do comedy on on Zoom. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and it's so funny because I have been booked like every weekend. Now, of course, I I don't make the money that I I you know I make um, when I actually have to go places, but 
I do. I did comedy for a senator from New York. Um, I've done comedy, and and it's actually and what I what I've been telling other comedians is if you're smart and you use your business side, you reach out to people that you could never afford to fly them here. Mm-hmm. Because now it has right. leveled the playing field for everybody. Oh, hello. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Because now people who, you know, before you was trying to be like, look, can I pay you this? And they like, nah. Now you'd be like, I got $50. They're like, yeah, let me get that $50. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get it's that Zoom ID again. You know what I mean? <laughs> Now everybody is kind of in the same place. Mm-hmm. And so it's actually allowed me to um, work with people that I haven't been able to work with in years. Mm-hmm. Because, like um, I've been doing weekly comedy shows um, via Zoom. And, you know, you book somebody that's in Texas. So now their following is now aware of you and right. vice versa. So um, it's, you know, it's had, it's had its pros and cons. It's increased my prayer life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm sure. <laughs> I know it has, but you know, we're going to make it through, girl. We really, we really are. And yeah. the thing is so funny, my church, last week, we had a comedy show. They had a, I had a guest that came in to do comedy because, you know, everyone's handling this in different ways and we all want to laugh. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's fabulous. You got to reinvent yourself and we're all Zooming it. You know? I, actually just, I actually just did a recording for a church. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to air next week. And they paid me, you know. They yeah. paid me to do it. So I'm available for hire. Anybody, I do bar mitzvahs, funerals. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sure. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. You get oh, it now. Oh, I'll be home. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Right. oh, my goodness. So, Liz, would you like to um, chime in with this as well? It's, um, like, like your thoughts behind all of this as well? Um. Sure. So for me, the pandemic has been um, a blessing in a lot of ways. Um, number one, I have more time to do my side hustle because I'm not, I have literally gained probably anywhere between three to six hours a day that I used to just spend trying to get to and from work. And that's gone. Woohoo! I commute down the hallway now and open my laptop and I'm at work. Which Praise is awesome. be. Yes. So, um, so that's one thing. Um, so I have more time now to invest in my business. Um, I did a, um, it's interesting. I did a 15 day gratitude challenge on Facebook, um, the mid from April 15th to the end of the month, um, just to kind of get in the whole business frame of mind because I was just, you know, I was just, I don't know. I was just feeling the gratitude. Um, and thought I needed some positivity in my timeline and thought I could contribute to that. So, and since I did that, since, since COVID-19 and the lockdown happened in March, um, I got a new client. I did a podcast. I have a, I had this speaking engagement. I have another one on Saturday. Um, so I've got three speaking engagements, including this one, got a new client and I'm about to launch a new product, um, in June. Um, so, you know, it's been all glass half full for me, um, which, which is awesome. So, um, but I think part of that is because people are doing the self care things that, you know, Deborah talked about and, and, and everything. So people are looking for ways to take better care of themselves and they're willing and they understand the importance of investing in themselves, a uh, mind, body, and spirit. Um, you know, because you can't, you know, take over the world and, do do whatever you do all day if your mind isn't right and if your body's not right and if your spirit's not right so like so people who come to who have businesses that come to it from a mindset of serving others i think what we're seeing is you're seeing you know you're attracting you're attracting that, you know, because people know when, you know, if you're just trying to sell, 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 shameless plug, shameless plug, money, 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 money. Yeah, that's cool. You know, you might win on the short term, but in the long term, if you don't come to your business with a mindset of service to others, you know, it, you're, you're in for a crash and burn because yeah. either you're going to get sick of that business because that business requires so much of you. You're going to get sick of it. Like I said, I, I, you know, I start everything with purpose and why, like, why do we do it? Why are we doing this? Yeah. It can't be because it's money or because we've always done it this way, you know, like, <laughs> like those are not yeah. the answers in my book. So, you know, but I think what we're seeing in this kind of post COVID economy is the, the entrepreneurs and businesses that are out there 
coming to it with them with the mindset of serving people are the ones that are really attracting new customers i mean obviously innovation you know mother necessity you know gives birth to innovation and stuff so people like like georgette are finding new ways to do what they do and things like that so all of that factors into it but i think you're seeing a lot more businesses pivoting to more of a service orientation in terms of um what they're doing and and, cons and consumers customers clients are responding to that so okay. right. so, so you know what not to cut you off we have a lot of questions on the floor and oh, um one of the things i uh, was <clears throat> a question from donald um so are you are any of you ladies leaving any of your full-time jobs to do this for those who already haven't anybody want to take that they can jump right in for those who are still working other jobs caprice um, okay, so, um, okay, I'm going to build on that question, but yes. just to build on your last question, yes. as far as this um, current quarantine, um, as far as our business, mm -hmm. we have booked so many virtual charities parties. If anybody wants one, you can yes. go to our page, Alter Ego Whole Fitness, um, on Instagram, just shoot me a DM, and um, we do virtual chair or twerk parties, either one of the two. And um, it's really fun to have some girls get together, just let out some steam, be wild online, take pictures. It's, it's really fun. So um, we've done a lot of that. And, um, and then, like I said, it allowed me to connect more with our clients. I give a free stretch class online. If you go to our page, you can stretch with us. We do that once a week. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a relaxing, you know, thing to do. And prior, just prior to this, I never thought that I would be connecting so much online as far as business. But now I see that it's possible. There's so many possibilities. Right. Um, as far as working, um, like I said, as of right now, um, I'm currently living in Florida and um, I'm managing my business from New Jersey. Um, that was a very long journey because I was pretty much held hostage at my business for at least six years before I was able to make the transition. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, just through um, just a lot of saving, a lot of strategic moves, um, I was able to kind of make the transition where now I'm more here full time mm -hmm. and there part time. Um, as far as working a full time, um, I'm not necessarily working a full time right now. I'm, I mean, alter ego is, you know, my full time. So it gives me a lot of time to kind of, you know, do everything. Um, however, but now that I'm, I'm here, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm trying to, I'm learning this state. So yeah. I don't know what else I'm going to get into, you know, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. I do have a real estate license, um, in New Jersey, but. <laughs> yeah. Can't use it. Um, but at any rate, yeah, but there are ways where there's a will, there's a way. You say, you plan, um, it can it can happen for you. You just have to be wise in how you invest. Yeah, definitely. You definitely you definitely do. Your, your invest how you invest and which how you do is so important. Um, I do want other ladies, other ladies to um, answer the same question as far as, you know, um, for those who are working other jobs, but also I want to add to that too. Um, how are you giving back? And thank you, Caprice, for adding that with, your, with the classes and that's giving back. So how are you also giving back? So Deborah, would you like to go? Uh, sure. Uh, so right now I am um, a full-time employee with Morgan State Specialist. Uh, so right now I'm looking to at least maybe like one more year of working um, okay. and try to maybe um, branch off into becoming a full-time entrepreneur next year. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'd be like, oh, can I really do it? Or, you know, just kind of do it. Finances. Yeah. 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 The goal for me is to be able to, um, I didn't want to get like a brick and mortar. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's, there's just, it's just so costly. So for me, I wanted to get a, I wanted to become a mobile juice. I want, yeah. cool. Cool. so, okay. Um, that's the goal for me is um, by next year to be a um, mobile juice company so that I can pop up at um, in Harbor or Hopkins or you know where the food trucks are. Yeah. More events like that and just be more mobile and, and do that full time. Um, That'd be great. 
So that's, that's I, the- I think that'd be good, especially, you know, you at Morgan. So going even back to Morgan and hey, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, and utilizing their, their campus will be excellent. Um, let me see, Liz. Oh, Georgette, Georgette, you want to chime into this question as well, Georgette? Sure. Um, I'm a teacher and um, I got 13 more years. Um, I'm going to ride these 13 years out. And let <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm an educator. I understand. So a child <laughs> calls me or uh, somebody. Now, some, <laughs> but right now, because um, I like having benefits. And I got a mortgage and two kids, and some of that costs thirty two dollars a can. Okay, so um, right now, <laughs> right now I don't know. I'm just saying right mm-hmm. now. And teaching, I it, it's it's so funny because now that I can't see my kids, and I well, you know, I see them via Zoom, which has been a horrible experience. I oh. don't know how to use the mute button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's a grandmother like, oh, I can't see. What about? <laughs> <laughs> put it up. What well, put it down? Oh, put it up. I'm like, can you mute yourself? You know. <laughs> We're okay. gonna be friends in real life. I'm just gonna say that. Kiki, I'm stealing her. Kiki, I'm stealing her. I'm sorry. <laughs> we love you all. We love you all. And, and so, are you giving back? Are you doing any community things at all, Miss? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, because a lot of times people have been calling me like, you know, they just want laughter. In fact, as I'm sitting here, I just got a text message from an AKA asking me about, you know, doing a community event. So, oh, definitely. Wow. And awesome. being that I have small children, I'm actually in the works of putting. Um, uh, uh, I want to do a Zoom for kids, like a talent show, uh-huh. you know, and invite, you know, children to come and just chime in and everything like that. So I'm in the process of doing that. Excellent. Everybody, please make sure you, if you have any, if you're a social media um, handle, if you're on Instagram, any of that stuff, please drop it in the chat box so people have that information, okay? So we can find you and, and, and utilize your services. Um, I want to ask like one one more question. I think I can squeeze something in here, oh or a couple. It is eight. So okay, okay. This is okay. Anybody can chime in. How do you how do you guys? You guys are awesome. You're fabulous, and I love you. Um, how do you define success? Ooh. How do you so you know? How do you can, can you can you define that for me like in a word? Maybe we want to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I would say success is um, two, two words. Uh, it's a goal and it's a journey. So there's mm-hmm. not one one size fit all for su- success. Success could be you achieving different goals or milestones throughout your life. Um, so for me, it was me um, starting a business or me mm-hmm. just starting a family or me becoming certified as a nutritionist. Those were all little successes for me. Mm-hmm. And so a never-ending journey so success is not oh you know a one-stop shop it's yes. something that always continue so just never give up just keep going success is its own going yes i just keep going for it thank you thank you caprice oh. um i feel like su- success to me is inspiring your circle if your circle or the people around you are inspired through how you know what you do how you live and you were able to make a difference in their life in some way then that is success to me um it's it's you know money like you said that just that's a side benefit of it but it's more about the connections with people and and giving sewing into people and so um like I said, I, I, I do this business. I mean, I'm grateful for where it has taken me, but more importantly, I love sewing into women. Yes. I love making them feel confident and making them feel like they can do I'm anything. I'm coming to your class. I'm coming. I'm coming to your class. <laughs> <Anything>. <laughs> <Y'all> coming. <laughs> and and I, um, I, I, I just love them so much. And I've met so many beautiful women through the years. And um, I can say that has been success to me. You know? Excellent, excellent, oh. excellent. And Liz, you, would you like to chime in with that as well? Um, sure. The only thing I would add, I agree with everything the other panelists have said. I, for me, I guess one way to look at success is, is success comes when you walk in your purpose. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You, of course, you have to Preach. know what your purpose 
you have to know what your purpose is. Yes. When you walk in that purpose, all these other things fall into place. Mm. Comes, the service comes, the, you know, the customers come, they say, you know, and everything. And, you know, just building on the previous question, um, you know, I would have started my business if I wasn't, you know, if I was still single, no dependents, I would have started my business. It was just me. I would have taken a leap and earned my wings on the, on the way down. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, um, you know, for me, I, even though I'm, I'm not at my financial goals yet, um, but I'm walking in my purpose and I feel yes. like, and, and every day that I work on my business, I feel like I'm a success. And every day that I get positive comments from videos that I post on Facebook or whatever saying, oh my gosh, that was great. You're such an inspiration, blah, 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 blah. You know, to me, that, that, that's success. Definitely. Thank Definitely. you. You want to add to end this out? Yes. I mean, yeah, I, I totally agree with everything when, you know, I feel like um, even though I haven't made it to the big screen, but the mere fact that I believed in and me enough to take that first step Amen. and work, embark on the journey. I'm successful. Um, I love bringing my daughters. Well, my daughter, mm. three, she's been to my shows. And, you know, I just love how I'm on stage. She's in backstage just watching oh. me live out my dream. So whether Tyler Perry ever calls me, she said, <laughs> Tell him to call me, too. He's going to call you. He's going to see you on the Zoom. He's going to call you. <laughs> the fact that I've set an example for my daughter is to tell them it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bigger than that. Yes. And I feel like I've already been successful. And can I just say one more thing? Oh, in sure. regards to the job thing, okay. one of the things that I've also done, because I know a lot of comedians right now, um, this is all they do. They, they just do comedy. I fortunately have other income. So what I have been doing is going back so every time I get paid I'll just hit up a comedian that I know does it full time I'll be like what's your cash at and I'll oh, wow. just, that's I'll, nice I've been doing yes. it with the pandemic just because um I've, I'm fortunate enough to be mm -hmm. in a position where I can do that but I know that there's a lot of comedians that this is all they do and and, mm -hmm. and this is literally stopped it so it's you know it's successful. It's it, awesome. it is. You have, you know what, you have, you have to get back. We got to help each other. Mm -hmm. And um, this evening has filled me with such positive energy, guys. So I truly appreciate it, ladies. Um, and appreciate you for being with us this evening, you know, on a Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. Sora, so Celia, do you have anything to close out as with or anything? I or sure Sora, will. I sure will. Yeah. Think if you want to, and then I can close out if you want. You guys are fabulous. Okay, one minute. I am so, this has been very... A, an inspiration um you ladies sharing your stories i know i wish we had more time to to learn more yeah. about you but i think that this really scratches the surface to anyone um you're you really drop some gems on us and you know i think business is good for anyone who's looking to have more time for themselves if they want to you know um be able to live truly live the life that they want to live there's they have you ladies um, who are mothers, who are uh, wives, they have you to look to as an example. So I thank you all so much for taking time with us tonight. I'm excited. I feel good. Again, for those of you who are on Zoom or Facebook, please um, follow the, check out these phenomenal panelists. Um, their information is on our social media pages, aka Pros by the Bay on Facebook and Instagram. It costs you nothing to like their, their pages, subscribe, and to check them out. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. And I'm turning it over to Celia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sora Kiki. Thank you. Ooh, this was another awesome evening. I, I want to say, first of all, um, humbling experience. Uh, we had Sora uh, Wilma Holmes Tootle, who um, is another former regional director. So that's two weeks in a row we've had regional directors come and check us out, whether it's on Facebook or Zoom. So I want to say and pay the proper homage to um, you know, our leadership and the source that paved the way for us. And to my, my chairman, um, Sora Arla Bentley, who is the regional membership chairman, and I serve on her committee. So I want to thank you, Sora Arla, for checking in as well. Um, I usually thank her last one. I'm going to thank her, well, third this time, technically. <laughs> Sora Kiki, I want to thank you for your hard work. As those of you who may know, Sora Kiki is our vice president. And as vice president, she is um, 
charged with ensuring that we provide programs of service to the community. Um, of course, when COVID hit, it kind of just turned everything upside down. Mm -hmm. And um, she has really, the word that everybody keeps using is pivoted. So she has really pivoted uh, what our program can look like. And um, having served as a vice president and program chair before, it's hard work, it's hard work. Probably, especially if you have a president like me. So <laughs> I have to tip my hat, you know, throw my pinky up to Kiki for doing a great job. Um, I want to also thank our co-host, Sir Katisi. Um, I was telling the story to the board last night during our board meeting that, you know, I saw the SORS in Japan. For those of you that are SORS or those of you that are not, we have chapters. We're an international organization. So we have chapters in Africa, Asia, Europe, you know, throughout the Caribbean. And I want to say hi to my swords from the Bahamas, two of the swords checked in on Facebook, Sor Mavis and Sor Press. Um, and they, it was a really great opportunity because I said, Sor Katisi, do you think you would do a, a exercise class online? Because the swords in Japan are trying to do a yoga class. We can't go nowhere anyway. Would you like to do it? And Sor Katisi was like, sure, I'll go on video. Sure, I'll go and dance on camera and help people stay fit during the corona. And she did it. And I think, you know, Katisi, you know, it's been like five or six weeks at this point, every Friday at 1230. And we've had so people from Germany, New York, California, that <laughs> come in and really <laughs> just needed that opportunity during this coronavirus to just focus on the self because you're almost actually forced to if you're doing, you know, this situation to your benefit. So this was great to have you on tonight as a co-host because she was kind of my guinea pig to see if this could actually work. <laughs> so thank you for your willingness to put yourself out there and be the first one to say, I think we could do this virtually and I'll, I'll be the first to go. So I want to thank you for that. Um, I want to thank our phenomenal panelists. Uh, so Liz, I know, you know, in these AKA VSG streets, we call them very special guests in AKA rather than VIP. So I have known her my, over my almost 20 years as a member. I've always known Sir Liz. She's always been hard working on a committee, doing this and that. So uh, very honored to have you here tonight. And to all the guests, you all are phenomenal. We are definitely going to do a sister relations. Oh, uh, <laughs> One of my last sisters, they, they tricked me into doing a poll class for our anniversary. But um, I, I think we're definitely going to do that. Uh, so Debbie, you know, I've known her. I was there when she was initiated. Um, and she has been phenomenal. I've purchased the juices. I believe in the product. It's excellent. It's excellent. It's excellent. And my new BFF, we're going to hang out as soon as the world opens up. I'm coming right up to New Jersey because you're my new BFF and I just have to steal you. So I want to actually really thank you ladies so much because you have an opportunity to do anything tonight, even if it's just being with your families, you know, for those of you that have other jobs, working on your job, working on your phenomenal businesses. And so to actually give us that time, you know, we really do appreciate it because we've all been um, edified by what you've offered to us. Um, and I just really have to say thank you. I mean, being able to walk away, um, one of you mentioned the idea that there's abundance, there's enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. and I said this last week yes. that we can help each other because guess what? What is for you will not pass you by. That's right. And if you have the skills and talents, you know, someone said perseverance and the motivation. And so Liz, those sponsors, the people who will speak up for me when I'm in the room or why I'm where I am right now with a job. That is a very great opportunity that I got during the middle of a pandemic. So I, I believe in sponsors, mentors, cheerleaders, you know, that whole lean in mentality. So I do want to thank you all, you know, because being able to tell us, you know, your why, you know, first of all, we're going to want your product and we're going to want to support you. And the ability yeah. you all to say to us, it's not even about the money. And, you know, I have a side business of doing um, vision boards and coaching. And um, a lot of times I did it for free. You know, I've been told that's not what you're supposed to do. You got to put a price on it. But I do it because I love it. So I haven't left my full-time job because I love being an attorney. But I love watching other people reach their goals mm -hmm. and be their best person. So I find, like, joy in doing that. So I just, again, I want to thank you all. Again, just a phenomenal experience. Um, I keep saying every week, the bar keeps getting raised. And I... Everyone, I want to wish you a good evening and thank you again for supporting Pearls by the Bay. Yay. Thank you, thank you, Soros. Yes, thank you. That goes rock, yes. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, good night everyone. Good night.